Oklahoma tribes are making a concerted effort and investment in being able to feed their citizens. And a big part of that includes raising bison and building their own meatpacking facilities. Our Native Affairs correspondent, Kennedy Sepulveda, has our report. The Quapaw Nation built the first USDA-inspected tribal meat processing facility on trust land in the United States in 2017. The Muscogee Creek, Osage, and Cherokee Nations followed suit to address food desert areas. And that really came about because of the food systems breakdown that happened during the COVID-19 pandemic. So we were seeing um, situations where um, specifically we couldn't get meat to, to our um, tribal programs. We really identified a need for uh, affordable, locally sourced protein. Um, with emergency food shortages and um, supply chain issues. Both the Cherokee and Osage Nations received CARES Act money to assist with enhancing their food sovereignty programs. Cherokee Nation used um, funding from CARES Act uh, under a program called Respond, Recover, Rebuild. And uh, it was part of a food um, plan uh, for the Cherokee Nation that included uh, new food distribution centers and new refrigerated trucks and this Cherokee uh, meat processing plant. We just took the initiative and moved forward um, very quickly on um, getting a plan together to how to address those food systems breakdowns, um, which included the farm, specifically indoor farming. The Osage Nation built this 40,000 square foot greenhouse for year round farming. Corn, tomatoes, peppers and varying herbs from the greenhouse are sold at the monthly farmers market as well as at harvest lands during business hours. Sometimes the garden goods go straight to the kitchen for canning. The last farmers market we had was the best turnout we've had. Um, we had over 300 people here and sold out of almost everything. And that was the first farmers market we were able to bring our own beef to the farmers market to bring another source of food for our people. In May, the Oklahoma News Report reported on the conservation efforts of the Osage Ranch and the 200 plus bison that roam the pastures. The bison herd is now under the Osage Nation Natural Resources Program. So we want to do um, kind of big picture land management um, for the herd and use them and, and treat them like they were historically. So we're really excited and excited about the cultural aspects so we can actually use the animals um, work with our um, language department, our, our cultural department, and really use the animal as, as our people historically used them as. Historically, every part of the bison was used. They used all of the, the internal organs, they used you know the hides, they used um, the horn caps. I mean, they used every, every piece of it is cultural in some way. So we want, when we process them through the meat facility, we want to make sure that Yes, we have the, um, the meat you know, to, to support our people, but we're taking into consideration all of the other pieces of the puzzle that I don't think really up till now um, were available to our people. The Osage Nation bison and cattle are not the only herds being processed through the Osage Nation's facility. I think um, the meat facility and especially with the bison has really strengthened a lot of the relationships that we have with other tribal nations and so that's been um, something that we hadn't considered when we went into this but has really been a, a great thing that's come out of the, the meat facility. The Cheyenne and Arapahoe's tribe's bison herd consists of over 700 bison. The tribe partners with the Osage Nation to process their bison meat. The Delaware, Oto, Missouri, Pawnee, Ponca, and Citizen Potawatomi also use the meat processing facility, and until recently, so did the Cherokee Nation. Just last week on October 25th, the 1839 Cherokee Meat Co. opened its doors. Just like with the Osage Nation, the produce can be purchased by all community members with or without tribal memberships. We want to make sure that we're providing quality meat products for our entire community, and that includes our rural areas, areas that don't have um, super access to uh, large grocery stores and, and food chains. We're uh, operating uh, under retail um, right now to uh, supply these coolers here that are in our store. Um, 
Uh, we have about uh, six employees hired in the back as butchers. USDA inspectors are at the facility every day during operation. It's, you know, they're here to uh, help us uh, make sure that we're providing a good, clean product at the end of the day. The Cherokee Nation partnered with the Osage Nation while planning the new operations in the 12,000 square foot facility, similar to how the Osage Nation partnered with the Qualpaw and Muskogee Creek Nations during their eight-month construction process of the 19,000 square foot Osage meat facility. Food sovereignty efforts by Oklahoma tribes are addressing food desert issues in rural Oklahoma. On average, if you do not live in the town that the grocery store is located in, you're driving 30 to 40 minutes one direction to get food. After the closure of the store in Hominy, there's only three grocery stores left in Osage County. We're trying to utilize grant funding to have a mobile farmer's market to be able to reach those communities that don't have a grocery store. Kennedy Sepulveda, The Oklahoma News Report.